Cameron Kilbridge has been a storyteller, teacher, and musician for nearly three decades. Her Celtic fireside tales have entertained many organizations, including the Duxbury Senior Center. Here is a Celtic classic. My name is Beth Cameron Kilbridge, and I have been doing storytelling for longer than I probably can to admit. It was in the mid 70s when I was uh, an undergraduate and um, had spent a lot of time in Ireland and time in England. I was a student teacher in London and I used to take a lot of trips back and forth across the Irish Sea. Um, but I learned a lot of the stories that, that I was telling from children who were in school in Ireland because as it turned out, while I was a student teacher, a fellow I was very interested in was just starting his year as a first year teacher in Callingford Lock in Dundalk County Louth. And funny enough, he's just retired. So it shows you how long ago I've been doing storytelling for uh, an entire person's career. Um, but what happened was that I was also taking world folklore and uh, cultures in, at university. And so I learned a lot about a lot of different mythologies. And so when I would talk to universities and schools about myths, Irish myths, it would be the Ulster, Fenian, mythological and historical cycles. And there were beautiful stories from each group. And funny enough, I never told a story about a leprechaun because I didn't like them. I didn't like leprechauns. I'm, I'm anti-leprechaun, um, have been for a long time. They're malicious little characters. The things they get into are, are never good. Um, they're greedy. Um, they're shoemakers uh, and the money that they earn from their shoes, they put into their crocs and they bury it and they keep it and they hide it. And, and they're just kind of miserable little characters. So I never told leprechaun stories. For 30 years, I never told leprechaun stories. I also felt that they kind of stereotyped what Irish tales were about. And so I'd rather people see the great Cúchulainn, who was a giant, and Finn McCool, who walked across from Ireland to Scotland and back, and, and giants and, and Tuatha Dé Danann characters who were heroes in their own right and fought great battles. Um, and they're beautiful people. But you got these little niggling kind of characters in the background who are making mischief all the time. You've got your, your banshees and your pukas and your leprechauns, and they're up to no good. So I kind of left them out of the story for a long, long time. Then I stopped doing Celtic storytelling altogether about 20 years ago. And recently, they've popped back up in my life, and I don't know how that happened, but I had to reevaluate my dislike of leprechauns and revisit them. So I spent a lot of time the past couple of weeks trying to psychoanalyze what's wrong with the leprechaun and why I didn't like them. And I came across a story, and I'm going to tell you the story, and you tell me if you like the leprechaun when I finish it. I'll leave it to you. So we have a young farmer. His name's Tom Fitzpatrick. And he's out with his cattle in the field. And he hears this tapity 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 tap. And he's thinking, what's the sound of that? And he starts to wander around in the field to see what's what's going on all together. And he happens to look in a rather high grassy area and he sees this wee man, this little fella, and he's wearing a, a big leather apron and his hat is kind of cocked to one side, red cap. And he's a little, little fella and he's working on a shoe and he's tapping this hammer into the heel of the shoe. And next to him is a huge jug, this big brown jug full of something or other. So as the as Tom approaches him, he starts to think, hmm, this is no little fella. This is a leprechaun. This is your one right there. So he goes over to him and he, he always, already knows, you see, because they're very well known in the countryside and certainly in rural areas, they're still very much believed in. And so he sees one, so he knows what it is. And he realizes that if he blinks or, or scares him that he could vanish. And there's that pot of gold issue that's at hand. So he sneaks up on your man. And as he gets closer, he, he makes himself heard so he doesn't frighten him. He says, excuse me, I'm after seeing that big jug. And I wondered, oh, he says, no, <laughs> didn't even introduce myself. My name is Tom. I'm down there on the farm, the cattle. Oh, he says, well, I know you, buddy. I know who you are, you're one in that cattle down there. He says, and by the way, 
You might want to keep an eye to them now. I think they're going near the outskirts of your property. And Tom knows that if he turns, he'll lose the leprechaun. So he keeps his eye on the little fella. And he says, well, I'm just curious now. What's that you're drinking? Oh, he says, well, he says, that's called Heather Ale. And the invaders from Denmark, many, many years, before, long before you were born, came and they taught the leprechauns how to make heather ale. Oh, it sounds delicious. Oh, he says it is. You would never have had anything like this. Would you like to try some? Tom says, yes, I would. I'd very much like to try some. And the little fellow looks at him and he said, well, he said, you might want to just take a look over your left shoulder because all your cattle are escaping. Thomas, that's enough. Grabs the little fellow by the shoulders and he shakes him. He says, I've had enough of this. He says, you, I'm not letting you go. He says, I am up to your tricks. I know what you're trying to do. He says, and I'm going to get that pot of gold. And as he grabs the little fella, he knocks over the jug. All gone is the heather ale. Down on the ground and poor. Well, Tom says to him, now, are we through with our list? Because I would like to find out where you keep your pot of gold. So the little fella says, well, then I'll take you to it. So if you're going to hold me like this, he says, I can't, I can't breathe. You've got your hands across my throat. I can't breathe. He says, well, then he says, take me to where we're going. So you're, the leprechaun takes him over fields and bogs and down into the thickets and over all sorts of mischief and mayhem till finally comes to a field of ragwort. And there are all these plants, miles and miles of ragwort, as far as the eye could see. And he said, my pot of gold is buried in here. Where, says Tom. I says, see that third ragwort over there, that plant right there? That's the one. He says, now you're going to have to dig pretty deep though. Tom says, what am I going to use to dig with? Sure, I've no shovel. So, well, he said, why don't you just go back and get the shovel and I'll be here. Oh, Tom says, I'm no idiot. You're not getting rid of me that easy. So with that, Tom takes off his red garter on his sleeve. He takes off the red garter and he wraps it around that particular red rod that he knows that the, the gold isn't in it, you see. And he says to the little one, he says, now, we've made a deal. That's the one you've told me. I've got my gold, my, my red garter around it, and I'll be coming back with my shovel, and it had better be there. Promise now you won't touch the red garter. Oh, I promise you, Farmer Tom, I'll not touch that garter. Tom runs home as fast as fast would go gets his shovel and he's back in a flash and your little man is gone and the garter is still there and so are thousands of other red garters around each and every ragwort plant in the field and that's how it ends up for Tom no pot of gold what do you think of leprechauns thank you so much Beth and thank you for staying with us for this episode of local matters from all of us at PAC-TV, have a happy and safe week. We'll see you next time.